Hello everybody, this is Paul Pona. Welcome to another live session on exactly how to get results with avatar builder videos and how to get clients with them as well. So it's gonna be a live session on that. Now, before I get into it, let me just kind of make this an announcement and also pin this on the top so you can all see it. And then we'll, we'll get underway with all the great content that I have for you today. And if you can hear me okay, see my screen okay and so on, everything, please do let me know, right? So that I know everything is good and there's no issues with listening okay with, with the audio and uh, so on and so forth okay hope that is clear all right now today uh it's going to be all about getting big ticket clients i recently surveyed people in one of the webinars that i've done and some of the you know chat that i've done with you folks and so on and the number one biggest issue has been getting clients with the videos that you create with avatar builder or any any videos that you create ultimately right so i'm going to be talking about that today and this is going to be a very crisp and straightforward webinar. I'm not gonna go for a couple of hours or something like that. I'm gonna be very crisp, I'm gonna make it straightforward, and I'm gonna talk about two components that are very important for this that I've learned over the years that will be of great help, okay? And this is fundamental business all over again, but it's something nifty, something you probably never heard about before, okay? So if you can hear me okay, and everything is good with my audio and, let my, and so on, let me know. And so uh, basically we will get underway, okay? I'm seeing everybody saying, a couple of people saying they are good, they can hear me okay. All right, from when I'm speaking to when you can hear me, maybe there's like a slight delay uh, because we're on a live stream and so on, so that's totally fine. Now, let me talk about the components here, okay? Of uh, getting big ticket clients and getting them consistently, okay? The keyword here, okay, and that's extremely important, is consistently, okay? This is the toughest thing ever, okay? Because I can get you, and you can get a couple of clients here and there. You can get a few clients, but that could be fluke, that could be luck. So what I'm gonna be showing you today is something to get this consistently, okay? How to do this again and again, day in and day out, day in and day out, okay? So what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna try something new right now. I'm gonna erase this basically, and let's erase this thing here. Actually, let me just delete this as well. Uh, let me just delete this, all right, cool. Now, basically, if you start off from the very beginning, okay, I want you to start off from scratch, scratch always. So I'm gonna make it as big as possible so you can see it, but the main two things to get clients, and that is, first of all, it is something called the foot in the door strategy, okay? Foot in the <laughs> door. Now, the idea here is very simple. People will pay you more money and will also, you know, obviously make you uh, their client, for example, or for example, you'll get them as a client if you get their attention and you can get through the initial hurdles, right? This is the initial foot in the door strategy. So that means in the initial stages, you should be open, okay? You should be also open to uh, basically do something called a lost leader or be willing to break even on that deal or for example, you know, give away a free video or something like that, okay? You should be, a be open to do something for free or cheap to get in, right? This is the initial stage of getting the client because then once you get in, it's, it's much easier to kind of get more deals done with that same individual because it's it's 600% more likely, I didn't make this up, it's six times more likely for somebody to buy multiple times from you if they already purchased once from you. Meaning you could get six customers, brand new customers, or you can get one person to buy six times from you, same thing, right? So. Uh, simple math, right? Now, the second way to do it is, and this, by the way, would work across the board with different strategies I'm gonna teach you today. But second one to do it is you gotta leverage platforms, okay? Now, what do I mean by that? I'll get to that in just a second. Second one is you leverage platforms, okay? So the idea here is that there are a bunch of platforms out there which already has a bunch of uh, people looking for certain services, certain videos, and so on and so forth. And they already have spent millions and millions of dollars building their brand, uh, spending money on advertising, and so on and so forth, right? So what you're doing is you're leveraging these platforms to generate you that clients, so then you can again build a 
portfolio of clients, a client base, if you will, okay? So that is the second part, okay? Which is we leverage, okay, platforms. And today I'm gonna to be talking about one of them. Again, there are multiple, I can go on and I'll go through them, but in the interest of making it as crisp and as easy for you to implement as possible, I'm gonna be talking about just one of them today, okay? Because I, don't, I wanna make sure that you implement these things and you don't get overwhelmed. So the one I'm gonna be talking about today is Upwork.com. Now you might have heard about it, it's fine, but the key thing is they did something new that is a game changer. And I'm gonna be talking about that and they introduced it literally like a week ago. That's another thing that's is a big, big, big game changer. So now, when we talk about foot in the door, foot in the door, you can get in even with the platforms, right? So for example, you can do something cheap, something free to get that initial client and so on. But there is one important thing when it comes to platforms that everybody misses, okay? This, uh, I'm gonna start these, this part. With platforms, everybody misses one important thing and I'm gonna show you that one important thing, okay? So that one important thing is, I'm gonna make it in red so you can never forget this, okay? Is something called an unfair advantage, okay? I say this a lot and sometimes people don't understand what this means, they don't understand what leverage means and so on, don't worry, I will I'll explain that today, okay? No problems. Unfair advantage means, okay? And I'm trying to write as big as possible so you can see it. Sometimes it might look ugly, but um, the unfair advantage basically means that there is some new developments out there where there is a demand and supply uh, mis in equation, as we like to call it in mathematics. Meaning, so for example, what I mean by that in simple terms so that you can kind of follow it is, let's say there are 100, right? And actually, let me make it a little bit better. You have 100 clients, right, in that platform. And then you have, let's say, um, maybe 50, right, people, right, doing projects, right, 50 consultants, let's say, consultants, agencies, whatever, right? Now, what's happening in this equation, okay? Can, uh, you know, you're watching this live and so on, right? What's happening? then there are more clients than there are consultants, right? This is the perfect way for you to land clients because they don't have that much choice in that 50 people. They have to pick somebody from this 50 people, right? Whoever is in that 50 consultants here will win. Now, this doesn't happen often. It very rarely happens, but it does happen. And today I'm gonna to show you one of those examples so that you can have a practical experience and how that applies. This happens actually in the early nascent stages of a platform. And this is the reason why you'll see early adopters jump in whenever something happens, like a Twitter goes live or uh, some Facebook or TikTok or Snapchat or uh, Rumble or Streamable or uh, there's all these other platforms, right? All these new platforms are coming or Clubhouse or whatever, you see all these early adopters jump in because there is this there is this discrepancy between producers and consumers as well in those platforms, but also clients and consultants as well, ultimately, right? That means it gives you uh, organic reach, as we like to call it. Meaning organically, without spending money on advertising, you're gonna get the client. So we like to call this, okay, organic, okay, and reach. Meaning for free, you can get clients faster, okay? So basically it's free. It very rarely happens, but happens. I'd say in a year, you'll see it a couple of times uh, in our space. Okay, a couple of times, maybe once or twice. You'll not see it more than that. Okay, now, if this is the situation, this will be perfect, right? So if I were to tell you, go get clients, and then they're like, and, and this is, by the way, just a rough draft. I'm, I, this could be like, for example, something like, um, you know, for, for you guys to understand, this could be, for example, uh, say one, um, let me actually open this. This may be like 1,000, for example, right? It could be 11,000, for example, and consultants is the same. It, it could differ, right? It, it differ. Like the point is that there's a discrepancy. There are more clients than people who are creating services for those clients, ultimately. That's the beauty, that's the sweet spot, right? So how do we do it? And what are some new things that are happening? So what we are uh, trying to do is something that is brand new that a platform is investing a lot of money on to advertise. This could be because their competition is doing it, this could be because uh, they see the future in it or whatever, and they are featuring 
you on their main pages, right? This is, this happened historically with Facebook, for example, when they introduced Facebook watch, I know it because I was there Facebook watch. So they introduced Facebook watch where you can post longer length videos, like a 30 minute, a one, one hour documentary. If you wish you can do all kinds of stuff in their watch uh, system. So, uh, two or three publishers or content producers who were producing videos back then, they got the huge benefit of it because Facebook featured them as a, key content producers. This happened with Twitter in the early days. This happened with Pinterest in the early days. Happens with every single platform. Now, this is happening right now with Upwork.com, okay? Now, what is that change? So let me actually go in and let me actually show you that so that your folks can um, see it. Okay, so let me open up my Upwork.com. They introduced something, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom it in for you, called Product Catalog, okay? And you can actually go to Upwork.com and they'll actually feature that. This is what it's called, Product Catalog, okay? Now, if you've never heard about it, perfect time that you've heard about it. It's, it got introduced just about a week ago and they've been pushing it heavily. This is their competition to Fiverr, okay? Upwork used to be um, a place where you can uh, where you can charge clients like hourly fees and um, you know fixed price projects, but really high-end products and so on. And they realized that Fiverr is eating their lunch on this gig economy where somebody can charge 50 bucks for a uh, logo creation or 250 bucks for an, for a simple 30 second video or you know so on and so forth right so they introduced this very recently now if you create an ac account with upwork right now okay and you get into say any one of these uh, fields you see there is logo design social media marketing wordpress uh, video editing right illustration you see these categories here, architecture, data entry, voiceover, like let's go into video editing as an example, okay? Now go in here, 839 projects are available. That means you gotta understand, okay? Just so you understand, I'm gonna go to Google and I'm gonna show you something, okay? So Upwork user base, I think, let me just find how many people use their uh, platform, okay? Uh, Let's see here. Okay, how many, how many, how many, how many, how many, how many, how many? Uh, let's just say a number. Oh yeah, sorry. It's right here. It's right in my eyes. What am I doing? So Upwork has over 18 million registered freelancers. 18 million, okay? 5 million registered clients. Okay, 5 million. I'm not saying it's what the platform says. It might be even more now because it could be old data, right? now. What I wanted to do is, I wanted to be clear here so you understand. Five million, what is happening with video editing? Only 839 projects, meaning only 839 people have started using this feature for five million clients, okay? Is that clear? Now, not all five million would want video editing, but maybe more like 800,000 might be interested. I, I would say it would be more, but let's, say, let's even say 800,000. So what I'm trying to explain to you, okay, is this is the discrepancy you gotta take advantage of. If I were you, and I'm gonna do it myself by the way, I would be one of these 839 because in six months, I'll do this exact same video and I'm betting you it's gonna be at least, at least 8,390, at least 1,000 more, well, 10 times more, right? 10x more products will be posted because it's just a brand new thing. It's a, such a brand new thing. Slowly people are uh, writing things and so on. So, uh, obviously because of that fact, right? You want to take advantage of it, right? Because now what's happening is when you're one of these 839 people, there's going to be two benefits you face. And this is something I've seen over the last decade. I've been doing this more than that. They're going to rotate this, okay? Throughout, you see these people here that you're seeing, all these people, they're going to rotate these things throughout uh, the day. So it's like, Beauty is that they're gonna keep rotating. They're not gonna feature one or two people or one or two uh, front page. You see all these people already 178 jobs, 91 jobs, 83 reviews, 84. A platform which has 5 million clients, which is verifiable, it might be even more now because that could have been old data, is actually advertising you on the front page of their website like this. That means it's a game changer for you, isn't it? Right, look at this. I, you will get a lead video that might improve your sales. Two day delivery from 200, right? I will create a fantastic video ad for your business. Let, let's look at, look at this one, $200, right? And okay, I can create uh, making an intro or an outro, a video editing, blah, 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 right? It's gonna put some stock footage and it'll do it. 
And check this out, right? This person has 134 people buy this uh, gig, okay? 134. I didn't make up, this is the price, right? And number of revisions, he put this here, it's 200 bucks. Now, you could be this person, right? And the cool thing is, remember I talked about that foot in the door strategy? These platforms are gonna provide you the clients. Then once you've got the client, you can offer them more services. You can offer them, uh, you know, like for example, social media management, where you can post these same videos in their social media profile. You can offer them logo, animated logo stuff. You can offer them 3D animation videos. You can offer them, uh, for example, multiple videos every month, right? On a regular basis for their social media, for their video ads and so on. You could offer them anything, ultimately. The goal is, right? You see this e professional e-commerce video ads. This guy has hundred bucks, right? And he already has 107 people buy this, okay? And this was introduced a week ago, okay, <laughs> literally. So you see how powerful something like this is when you can leverage the platform to get the clients. Now you're gonna say it's only 100 bucks, but somebody who pays you 100 bucks once is more likely to pay you thousands of dollars in the future, right? The people that I worked with, for example, I'm personally, right, if somebody who I paid 100 bucks, for example, I paid thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands even for some of these people because once the trust is built, it's very difficult to eliminate it, right, uh, because you'd rather work with people you already know. So this is the reason why I want you to take advantage of platforms with the latest trends that are happening and taking advantage of them will give you the edge over your competition because now what's happening is, in the future, let's say if, if this 8,000 thing, right? I'm sorry, 839 people thing, right? It becomes 8,390. You'll be one of those people who have 1,700 or so many other reviews, right? And the number one issue people always have is like, what about reviews? What about how do I get a bunch of reviews or client uh, testimonials and so on, right? And you should be good to go. Because now you're gonna have, by the time this, uh, saturation begins like Fiverr has and other platforms have and so on you already have thousands of reviews by that point that you everybody will want to hire you anyways right now why is this so powerful well I'll explain to you so you understand you go to Fiverr.com right and I'm gonna go there right now so you understand what I'm talking about because the uh, the the people who get majority of the clients are the ones who have all the reviews, right? Like for example, if I go into Fiverr and just put voiceover as an example, right? There are gonna be like, what, 17,000 services available, okay, 17,000. But, 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 you go in, most of the people will be based on, you know, you see how it says relevance, right? It's gonna be mostly people with reviews. You see this 1,000 reviews this person has. This person has 516 reviews, 908. The people with zero reviews never come into the top list. Never, I mean, it's unfortunate, it's a fact, but they don't come, right? So always these people with like tons and tons of reviews and so on. So the point I'm trying to make is the people who come early generally end up getting the worm and also generally end up destroying the competition because they become uh, the top list. Like this person is a top rated seller, right? Okay, now if I click on this person right now, you will see this is 40 bucks for a simple voiceover, but if you, if you actually scroll down a little bit here, right? You'll see 2,000 actual uh, projects that he got five stars on. So meaning the people who posted reviews, that means he could have done 10,000. Not everybody posted a review, right? So you see my point, how you can raise your prices and so on because people wanna work with people who already have good reviews, for example. Uh, this person has one order in queue. So let's see some other one here, like this one. How many orders in queue right now? One order in queue right now, okay? So you'll get a better idea of uh, processes like this. Okay, clear? So that you understand how the game works. Now, coming back to the Upwork one, okay? Uh, because it's important that you guys understand. You see how these have service options, okay? You see ads and social media videos is one, corporate videos, wedding videos, family travel videos. You, you can use this to your advantage too. You can go in and post in these categories which don't have that many videos or that many projects, right? So for example, corporate videos, very interesting. Only 64 people, 64 products are posted for corporate videos. Let's go check it out actually, okay? Check this out. You will get a PowerPoint webinar converted into video. You will get a professional interview video. You'll get a corporate video to promote your business. $500, this one actually, okay? Let's just check that one in just a second. Um, Let's see here. Yeah, it's a professional real estate virtual tour video. You get an incredible video sales letter to boost your video sales letter. You can create video sales letters with uh, 
with um, you know avatar builder 82 people already purchased some level of this one three thousand dollars okay and look at it. it doesn't even have a project title picture nothing it's like a mess this whole thing is a mess right but you see just because he's the first person to come in into this category it doesn't really really matter right um and you can go down professional corporate video for your company presentation right uh, professional video blah 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 we got the idea this is this is a premium one minute commercial for your business stuff which you can create with uh, avatar builder with background videos and so on these text effects like this right standard advanced if you click on advanced it's four day delivery time just the delivery time is faster uh, and it's uh, footage provided is four minutes okay this one is uh one minute you see so you can go here and then you can do this stuff. I mean, nobody's stopping you, right? At the end of the day, look at this. Uh, 54 people bought from this person or 58 total, right? So this is something you got to take advantage of. And, you know, I always try to explain things in a very clear way, crystal clear way and so on. But the problem is after the time people get information overload. I want to be very, very clear so that you can understand. Fiverr used to be like this, okay? Back in the day, just a few years ago, uh, if you look at it, they used to be like, you could post a gig on Fiverr and if, uh, you could be listed in this top two or three pages and you could be getting people coming in because there was a discrepancy between the number of people buying the gigs or in this case, the jobs, the clients versus the people who are actually producing the jobs, so providing the services, right? Or the consultants, the agencies and so on. This is the case right now with Upwork. This is the next generation stuff happening. This is what you got to take advantage of. If you miss stuff like this, you, I know some people are like, oh, that sounds cool. I'm going to get the account whenever. You're going to miss out and then it's going to get saturated like anything else. There's nothing, nothing lasts forever. And then you're going to be kicking yourself later, right? Now, the other cool thing with Upwork specifically, it's a publicly traded company, okay? By publicly traded company, the advantages that you have is they're spending billions of dollars on advertising to get you clients. You don't have to do that. You don't have to go in and find clients. You don't have to do anything. They will find the clients for you. And the beauty is here, yeah, reviews are great and so on. I get it. But if you, you can even find some people here who have barely any reviews. Like you'll find like, see, this person is 18 reviews. This person is seven reviews. Um, there'll be even people with zero, I'm pretty sure. There's like five here. I guess just because of the fact that so many people are buying right now, there's no way somebody having a zero review simply because by the time they even post like this person has only two reviews, right? Laura, uh, if you go here, she just got two reviews, but she probably already had somebody buying from her right away, right? So she already got reviews without even worrying about uh, anything, right? See this? So this is an advantage for you. This is something you got to take advantage of. What I recommend if I was smart and uh, I would do with you, see this, these are the people with no reviews. You see this? uh down here so you can be one of these people and you can be in the front page with even zero reviews it doesn't matter the point is that it's value and you're getting featured somewhere and you're getting your exposure to your brand and the cool thing is these right here they also get listed on search engines by the way okay like if you go in and you search some of these things they get listed on the, on the top of search and you're like i can quote it upward gets actually listed on search engines all the time okay you see this it gets indexed on search engines pretty fast so that's another advantage that you have uh, where somebody's searching for a professional video for brand and so on, you'll come on top of uh, Google and forever, which is a big, 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 big benefit uh, for traffic generation and so on long term. Now, the other uh, part of this that is beautiful, which I would do if I go back and you got to take advantage of the categories as well, right? Especially when something like this comes. That's what smart people do. Uh, what they'll do, service options, you see these categories, you would push one pr uh, uh, project in every one of them. Okay, every one of them. So that either e-learning videos, you can do that with Avatar uh, Builder. You can do show reels, you can do wedding event videos, corporate videos, you can do gaming videos, you can do everything. Maybe the only exception is this VR 360 uh, that may be more specific, but other than that, anything else you can do here, right? Uh, explainer videos and so on. You would put a post right here, your, your uh, opportunity to connect will uh, with an audience is almost guaranteed now because the client is searching for any one of these categories you're going to be there right and the other thing that you could do is you see how it says budget here you, you can check where the budget is okay where people are actually uh, budgeting and you can play around with it and also delivery time you see how uh, here it says less than seven days right 819 so you want to put it in the sweet spot here less than seven days so you want to put your delivery date to fall into this category rather than this other category where people might not search for. You just gotta take advantage of these category filters as well, by the way, uh, which I do all the time by, uh, in my own business because I wanna take advantage of the categories because they'll give you more edge, right? So this super secret strategy that I 
Uh, I just saw them implement about a week ago. They've actually given, uh, you'll see me here, right? I'm an Upwork Plus member, so I've been seeing this for the last one month, but it's not open for everybody. That's why I don't mention stuff that nobody gets adva taken advantage of, right? Like I could have shown this to you a month ago, but nobody could get an account. Only those so-called Plus users or older users who've been using Upwork forever could use. But now since everybody can use it, that's why I'm mentioning it now so that you can take advantage of it, right? Now the questions, right? Let me go through some of them. Is there a better chance with Upwork than Fiverr? 100% right now, no questions asked. Uh, I'll tell you the secret behind it actually, okay? Um, and hopefully you'll get the insights of it. So let's talk about this, okay? Upwork stock, right? This is Upwork, okay? Their stock is worth 4.74 billion right now. They're a publicly traded company. They're worth 4.74 billion, okay? Now Fiverr, let's talk about Fiverr stock, okay? You see Fiverr is worth 9.38 billion. Uh, so it's all, more than double of what Upwork is worth, the Fiverr stock. So Upwork in, is in a stage where they wanna catch up to Fiverr and they, they, they are in a situation, because you know, if you see here, um, Upwork has more employees, Upwork has uh, you know, longer uh, standing, they've been um, in, in the business for a long, lot longer, and they got a new CEO, you see this? Uh, Hayden Brown, she's a genius by the way, um, and she, she just joined about a year ago. So obviously they're in that stage where they're very aggressive, they're like, we gotta beat Fiverr like, at all uh, intensive purposes, we're gonna go crazy, we're gonna go advertise more, we're gonna do whatever, and they are in that zone. And in that zone, a company will go crazy trying to get more clients into the platform, right? So yes, you wanna take advantage of uh, the discrepancy we like to call, right? Between clients and customers, this right here is your best opportunity to do this, okay? And yeah, right, so this is the way to get in the door with no following, 100%, right? You don't need following, you don't need likes, you don't need shares, it's all irrelevant. Take advantage of the platform because once you get these 292 reviews like this uh, uh, you know, this person has here, that's 292 possible clients that you can reach out to at any time. You can message them saying, hey look, are you interested in more projects? I can do this other stuff for you. That's 292 customer base that you have that you can reach out to at any time. And in fact, it's better for these platforms that you reach out to them, they'll even help you. In fact, I can go here, this is their live chat, right? Uh, and I can go in and I can ask them, hey, look, I have these clients. How do I approach them in the best way? And they will even message on your behalf. And I've done that many times myself because I use Upwork a lot. Um, so you got the idea here, right? So powerful, powerful stuff, okay? And should you indic indicate you're just starting? No, you don't have to. The point here is value, okay? Value, nobody cares how many reviews you have, how you're doing. What people care is does it solve their problem, right? Whatever it is that they're trying to do. And so you don't have to say you're starting and so on and so on. Can I do more than one listing? Yes, 100%. Uh, that's what I was trying to tell you. If you go into service options, you see all these categories here that they have, they might add more by the way, but go into every one of them. What's stopping you? Go into every single one of them, right? And you'll have what? Uh, what is it? Three, six, seven, eight, or 16, or 15 of them or so you can go into. So 15 different things that you can do, right? Um, another question is, uh, which I'm seeing, okay. Uh, Okay, look at this one. I've used Upwork to help promote a campaign this past summer, wasn't too pleased with them. I ended up thinking I should have done it myself, but I've done it better. This is a good point, okay, Rick? The thing is that what I, let's see, so you gotta understand, okay? And I'll, I'll show you. The amount of money that I'm spending on Upwork right now, I'll actually go, hopefully I can show you. Just this week alone, I personally, right? spent, uh, you'll see here, $7,500 in the last one week, okay? Uh, and this week is not even done yet. So there are people like me here spending a lot of money in this platform. The only thing that I wanted to kinda, I don't wanna go in, dip, in depth here because they don't allow you to show some employees that are working for me and so on, but the point is that this right here, right? right, is, is the kind of money I'm spending here in this platform. So obviously there are a lot of people spending this kind of money in a lot of businesses. When I'm searching, right, I'll go in, you gotta understand, you see browse predefined projects. When I click here as a client and I'm searching, I, I can go in here and then say video, right? And then I can search and I, I'm gonna find all these people here. That was not available a week ago. It's only available now. So instead of me going in and finding some, uh, posting a project, I can immediately come here and, and do it. And there are five million people like this searching, right? Five million people. 5 million clients. And some of these are very, very big big clients. Like I I found, I'll explain to you, five clients in this platform who's, who personally spent with me hundreds of thousands of dollars. 
uh, because they're big big ticket clients here. You can imagine some of the biggest uh, uh, customers in Silicon Valley, some of the biggest uh, customers from uh, you know small businesses, e-commerce brands uh, from all around the world use this platform, even more so than Fiverr. Fiverr has this reputation as this cheap platform where you can get cheap gigs. Upwork was always this premium platform where you can get premium talent and therefore the kind of clients that you get are also very big. Like if I go into say 3D animation, I'll even show you that right now so you can see. Um, 3D animation and you search, these are the people in 3D animation, right? So you will see people making hundreds of thousands. This person, you see $100,000, $200,000. Uh, this person, um, it gives you the information, by the way, right? How much they've earned in this platform. Uh, 70,000, this person, 80,000, this person earned, right? And this is just in the first three or four pages here. I could go in deeper and you'll find 600,000 this person made, right? He does explainer videos, animated explainer videos for clients. 600,000, okay? You have to understand. This is a big ticket platform. And this is 90 bucks an hour. Uh, this one, he does like uh, videos for big clients like uh, M Marketo, um, you know, Motorola and so on. He creates explainer videos and corporate videos for them. $200,000 this person has made. So what I'm trying to explain is that they're like, I can keep going. Like I'll, I'll go into a random page. Let's go to the fifth page or something. And you'll find even on the fifth page, there are people making 50,000 uh, bucks, 500,000 here as an example. Right, explainer video producer, this person, okay? 145 bucks an hour. Uh, this person, 20,000, 50,000, 60,000. Even on the fifth page, 200,000. So imagine if these are the kind of earnings some of these freelancers are doing, the caliber of the clients who are hiring them, right? I mean, there have to be a ton of clients hiring these people to pay them this kind of money, right? So what I'm trying to explain ultimately is this is just one category. I could go into video editing, corporate video creation, explainer video creation, and so on and so forth. And I could still find a ton of them. And on all these people, if they went into their main homepage in their account um, and they click on browse pre-made jobs, right beside post a new job, right? They can find you here. So what is stopping you? They click on social media marketing, for example, right? This is social media management, social content. Social content is what you need. Click on it. Okay, look at, look at this right here. Create high quality travel videos for Instagram, okay? And this, uh, uh, you'll see a bunch of videos for social media networks and so on and so forth. Simple stuff, but you see how these people are getting you know, dozens and dozens of sales and it's gonna be more over the, over the next few months because it's a brand new platform, right? So very, very powerful, okay? And hope that is giving you ideas as well, right? Because, uh, you know, um, can I get software created up? Yeah, you can get anything created here. Uh, if you're having your first time, why would people hire with no reviews? It's because of discrepancy, okay? Because see, look, you gotta, you gotta understand. Only 138 products are posted for social media content, but millions of clients are possibly searching for this right now because a brand new thing. Only 138 people are posted. You could be one of these 138 people, right? And what's gonna happen is when a market discrepancy like that happens, just based on your value alone, maybe you're gonna do your first few products pretty cheap compared to the competition, right? Um, just because of the numbers discrepancy, you're going to get the clients. It's as simple as that. You see all these people who have nine reviews here, 11. You think these guys had like, uh, you know, uh, you know, a lot like reviews beforehand. No, they got it from these gigs that they posted, uh, right here, this simple projects, cause that's how they got their clients quickly. Right? You see this three reviews here. These people, they didn't have these reviews before. They just got them from these, these, uh, posts that they made right now, which you can take advantage of. You're getting front page uh, access to a platform with 5 million plus buyers and clients. Not going to get an opportunity like this often. I'm betting you this 138 is going to become 1,388 within the next few months. The, the advantage is you got to jump in now, right? And it's free to join. I mean, it doesn't cost you any money to join this, right? I mean, what do you got to lose? You just go in and sign up. It doesn't cost you a single penny, right? And, um, oh, thank you so much. I appreciate your help and, uh, and your, your support and so on. Now, this is, Another thing I kind of wanted to make uh, here, there's no such thing as a big job, small job, and so on. There's no such thing as big client and small client as well. I'll give you a perfect example. There are businesses I worked with over the years who are very small businesses. They were like maybe making 10,000 bucks a year and so on. In the last three or four years, they've now made millions of dollars. Now, because of the fact that I worked with them when they were in the early stages, now the products I work with them are minimum $100,000 or more, right? I, I work on some copywriting jobs, video creation jobs for these big businesses, uh, consulting, you know, on, on how they can create their sales process, you know, stuff like that. 
and I charge hundred thousand dollars or else I don't even go into those projects. Now that doesn't mean that these guys started generating millions of dollars and they hired me. They will not, they will not need me if they're already making millions, right? They will need me to get to that level. So this is why you gotta never approach things like, oh, I need that client who already spending millions of dollars. You gotta look at it like every business will have a growth spike eventually. Uh, some will crash and burn, but some of them will also grow. It's a question of which ones and which not. It's a numbers game at the end of the day. So if you invest in the right kind of businesses, and you provide them services and you have them in the client portfolio, you're good. Because once they keep growing, you're good. And, and I'll give you a perfect example uh, on this and on the highest level, right? It didn't happen to me, it happened to somebody. So Uber, you know, the Uber, which is that you know, car share company, right? Um, they had, um, they had uh, <laughs> uh, their fir first four or five employees. The fifth employee was not a programmer um, in, in, in Uber. She was a secretary, right? So she joined as a secretary in Uber and they gave her, they told her, look, we cannot pay you much salary. Are you okay if we give you some stake in the company, right? Like some shares. She's like, okay, why not? And that was her first job right out of college, <laughs> right? She's like, why not? And today she's worth, I think like hundred million or something like that, hundred million dollars. Cause you know, she was one of the first employees. She got a bunch of shares and then it catapulted itself and so on. And I know personally some examples of some projects that people did with new companies like software companies uh, or anything, like any growth oriented companies. And they will be like, I don't want any money. Give me a percentage of your shares in return. And I've seen that happen a lot as well, where a lot of these businesses, they don't have that much money. So they're like, okay, create me products. I'll give you some shares. And over time, those could be worth millions of dollars, right? It's a question of understanding how you leverage your time. That's the key thing. And that's how you have to look at it. Okay. You're all in this in the long run anyways, right? So now this is another question. How does Upwork get paid if they don't charge anyone to join? So they get a cut of the fee as yeah, this basically they cut a cut from the fee. Absolutely. They get about, I think 10% or something along those lines. Okay. Um, of uh, the fee that uh, depending on how many, how many jobs you're doing it. So 10, 10% and 15% and so on, something like that. Uh, that they get, depending on how how, much, how many jobs you're doing and so on, how many you know services you're doing, and that's better for them because it's performance based, right? So that's how they they get some results and so on. Now the other one, uh, if I offer my copywriting services, should I open a new account or a different name to offer animated? No, absolutely not. Um, in fact, you gotta bring both of them together too. Let me explain. A copywriter is more valuable if the copywriter can also do video creation or consulting on video creation. I would personally hire a somebody for my own business if he's both, right? Or she's both. Like if you can do both copywriting and you can also consult with videos. If you can do videos and also copywriting. And in fact, it's even better because you can say, hey, I'm a copywriter, I've already done work, and also I'm doing creatives right now where I can help you craft the right kind of sales video for your, uh, for your business. I can craft the right kind of, uh, uh, you know, if you will, marketing video for your brand or business, right kind of video ad for your business because I'm already a copywriting expert. So I can add those triggers that a copywriter would do and uh, I, and I can show you all those elements and so on. And you'll, you'll get more jobs by that because you're now specific, right? Like you have an extra skill than a normal video creator, right? You have an extra uh, edge over your competition. So definitely, okay, uh, for sure. Now, the other thing here, okay, and this is of uh, importance uh, so you folks understand. When a discrepancy like this happens, jump on it and take full advantage of it. Like somebody was asking, how many jobs can I put? Post everywhere. You see, Snapchat has zero jobs right now. You could be posting in Snapchat right now, videos. Reddit has zero. You could be posting in Reddit uh, here. Your product tent has zero, post there. Because there's nobody, there's zero competition right now, guys, there's only one me called. So why don't you create a video for product hunt uh, software products, which you can do with uh, Amazon Builder, for example. Why can't you create videos for Tumblr, right? Why can't you create videos for TikTok? Why can't you create videos for whatever, WhatsApp? There's only 1% for WhatsApp, all right? Um, so this is another thing, right? We can take advantage of because as I said, when there's no competition like this, you're the only person Getting clients is super easy now. And the third part becomes it's an unfair advantage you get and it's an edge you get over everybody else. And it's an, and, and I'm telling you, even though I've told this, there's only a small percentage of people who apply or go and do this stuff, right? And, and I get it. That's the reason why at the end of the day, uh, I might as well tell, share it because that's one of the reasons people ask me, like, why do you share secret strategies like this for free? You could charge people money. Well, because I know most of the people will not do anything. The few who do will appreciate it and they'll buy some stuff from me later on, like have good things to say about me, right? Obviously. 
So that's another benefit that I have, okay? Now, another question, okay? And this is another thing that I kind of wanted to uh, uh, mention as well, okay? Um, uh, this was similar to this as well. So, which is a good point I wanted to uh, mention here. That, that was about this part, okay? This is another question I already went through, but I'm gonna follow this one more time because this is a question everybody might be having. So is this the way to get in the door with no following? Okay, so we've been ingrained for some weird reason. I don't know why, maybe it's society or whatever. I mean, I'm not sure, uh, but to answer this point, which is we've been taught like, oh, the more uh, likes that you get, right? Or the more uh, followers that you get, right? The more successful you're going to become. And let me tell you, that's completely garbage, okay? Trust me on this. I, I'm telling you right now with utmost sincerity and utmost um, uh, with, with, with proven facts, it doesn't work like that, okay? Like, for example, our group, right? Our group. I'll just give you an example in our Facebook group. My Facebook group uh, that you're in right now and you're watching this as a live stream, we are just about 20,000 subscribers, okay? 20,000. Now, I get more engagement, okay? And there's another point I want to make. I get more engagement and more likes and uh, so on than somebody who has even 200,000 people in their group, okay? It's a fact, you can go check it out. And this is what I've been told by everybody who joins our group and this is what uh, people who, when we do interviews and so on, they say like, your group is very engaging, Paul and so on. And that's a testament to you folks, I appreciate you and so on. You folks join in, you like, you share, you comment and so on. And so what the algorithm of Facebook does is, and this is by every platform, by the way, not just Facebook, it's for every platform, is they're gonna reward the more engaging person, right? They're gonna reward this person because this person has 20,000, yes, but has more followers being engaged, more comments and so on. So they're going to feature in your newsfeed this person's content more so because it's in their best interest, right? Because these people are engaged. Well, these people like barely are engaged, right? They're not at all engaged. Now, in the same token, what well, YouTube and Facebook and other platforms, whether you like it or not, it's a fact. And this is another reason why I don't care about the platforms. I care about like how you can take advantage of the platforms. I don't have any love for Facebook or Twitter or any of these platforms. I just use it because I feel it's the new media, right? It's, it's not like it's much more powerful than TV or radio or whatever, right? That's the only reason why I use it. And if it, if it is not as useful, I'm not going to use it. It's as simple as that. I don't have any special liking to it. But the point is that you got to use them for what they are, right? They are a message uh, a communication platform to communicate your message and so on, right? At the end of the day. Now, the point is that the way these platforms work, and this is the algorithm that every one of them uses, because I know <laughs> this is how it works. And this is how Gmail works, by the way. This is how all these platforms work. So, and actually, uh, let me give you a bigger canvas so I can explain this better. So, you know, I don't want to, you have you guys miss out on it. Okay. So the platforms, this is the last thing I'm going to mention here today. So it's crisp and again, you can follow along is YouTube, right? Let's talk about YouTube because a lot of people talk about YouTube. So YouTube, this is how it works. You post a video on YouTube, right? So let's say this is your YouTube uh, video, right? Now, what happens is let's say your YouTube video is a five minute video, okay? It's a five minute video. Let's say how the algorithm works, especially if you put monetization and so on on in your YouTube channel, is that first of all, they're gonna find out who your initial followers are. So let's say you have 100 followers. You don't even have thousands. You have, don't have hundreds of thousands. Let's say 100, okay? So let's say we uh, together built, and we can help you out getting those 100 followers, by the way, because in this Facebook group alone, we can help you out. We have another group as well uh, that we help out with followers, likes and comments and so on. Uh, as a community, we help everybody out so that if they open a new YouTube channel, we we'll help you out with likes and so on. So the reason is, you know, getting started is the hard part. Uh, getting followers is the hard part. So we help out everybody as a community and we follow each other. And more important than that, it's not about gaming the system. It's more about helping everybody out and sharing uh, as a community, right? So that, you know, everybody's interested in video marketing. If you share it in our in our group, so then everybody who's interested in video marketing can join your, uh, subscribe to your channel for good content, for example, right? So now let's say you got 100 of these subscribers, okay? 100, simple. And let's say 100 subscribers. Let's say what YouTube does is that they will send this video to those 100 subscribers first, meaning it's gonna show up and it's gonna send a tag, it's gonna send a notice, whatever, whatever it needs to be done. 
Then what they check is from these 100 video, uh, subscribers, how many of them finished this video? Okay, very important part, you gotta understand. That's something called conversion rate in our industry, right? A lot of people probably already know this, but conversion rate, conversion rate, meaning out of 100 people, how many people ended up watching the whole video, okay? So if that rate is very, very good, the, the general consensus that I've read, I mean, don't quote me on it, but generally what I read is that anything about 30% is very good for YouTube, okay? Meaning 30% of the people of these 100 subscribers, if they watch the whole thing, that's very good for YouTube's algorithm, then what they're gonna do, and this is very interesting by the way, and I read this from the smartest YouTuber uh, who taught me this and I've been using this ever since, but and using it in all platforms. What they're gonna do is now, they're gonna feature you on a placement as a recommended video or somewhere where they're gonna send you 1,000 visitors, okay? Or viewers, if you will, right? If you keep maintaining this 30%, they're gonna send 10,000 more, okay, next few days. If you maintain that 30%, they're gonna send you 100,000 more, meaning they're gonna feature you in the homepage of YouTube for different people. If you keep maintaining that, they're gonna keep sending you millions and millions and millions. That's why you see some of these videos on YouTube where the guy has like 68 million views or something in that video. And you're like, why does this have 68 million when an exact another person who posted a similar video that you like does not have anything? Well, it's because that person had the highest conversion rate, meaning somebody who watched that video finished it. So my point is, subscribers then is irrelevant, isn't it? They only care about that initial reach, that 100 people. The more of these you have, the better, obviously. The more of these loyal people that you have will finish the whole video is more important. But... Do you agree with me that if you have, let's say, a million subscribers, it's even more harder to get this 30% conversion rate, right? Maintaining it is even more harder, especially if you don't engage with them uh, and they watch some other unrelated video on your website or in your YouTube video, and it doesn't make any sense. The same way, okay, it applies for everything, okay? Facebook, same thing. Let's say Facebook. What they check, if you post a video on Facebook, is they check how many likes it got, Right? How many finishes, meaning how many people finish the whole video, the pause. For Facebook, it's much more easier actually because by default, all Facebook videos are muted, right? Whoever clicks the play button to actually watch the audio, right? Play button is considered a conversion for them, right? Engager. And then the other part with Facebook is shares also. And they actually have a rating system, by the way, and I kind of have the inside scoop of this one, so I'll kind of give you uh, this. Again, it keeps changing from time to time, but they score likes as one point, okay? Play button as one point, shares as something like three points, okay? The more shares you have, the more powerful it is. It, I've even heard some people say it's five, actually. So you could get five likes or one share, it's the same thing in the point system. Now, the more points that that video has for the amount of views that it got, reach it has, they're gonna release more reach, meaning more in the newsfeed, more, more, more. They're gonna keep hitting you in different uh, directions, more of your friends, their friends, and so on and so forth, right? And this is how you get organic reach on Facebook. And with Gmail, same thing. A lot of people ask about email marketing, right? It's secret email marketing. So let's say email marketing, right? A lot of people are like, Paul, like when I do email marketing, I don't get the open rates I used to get, right? I don't get the open rates I used to get. I used to get a ton of open rates, Paul, but like I'm not getting those open rates these days. Well, let's talk about email marketing now. The way Gmail works, okay, and I'll talk about Gmail particularly because they're the most sophisticated of the platforms, right? I mean, the other ones are not as sophisticated as Gmail. Uh, for example, Hotmail and so on, not as much, like if you can do it. Gmail is the same way. How they do it, let's say you have uh, 100 subscribers, okay? I just put subscribers, uh, opt-in subscribers or whatever. What they check is from when you mail somewhere, right? When you when you mail to these hundred people, how many of them opened? They have a score for that, okay? They'll say open equals, I don't know, one point maybe. And then they also click, say like how many people clicked on a link, okay? Engaged, okay? This, this score might be like something like three or five or something. So let's say it's five. So they have a metric. So if this percentage, let's say out of this, 30%, again, same like Facebook, I heard like 30%, 20%, something like that, like 20 to 30%. So I'm not, I'm not gonna say uh, it's like 20% to 30%, okay? These two would be the possible mark. If this is the case, then they know that you have an engaging email list. So then when you get more subscribers and opt-ins into your list, let's say tomorrow you build this 100 people into 500 people, right? Let's say you build it to 500 right? 
as long as you maintain this 20% open rate, they're gonna hit the inbox. They're not, they're gonna hit the primary tab as we like to call it, right? Not the promo tab, which is the worst, uh, or the spam folder. So you're gonna be in the primary tab as long as you keep hitting this 20 or 30%. Tomorrow you add in more. Let's say you add in 5,000 people. As long as you hit this 20 to 30%, again, meaning, you gotta understand this, millions of people are sending millions of emails every day to that inbox you're gonna be the primary tab. That means you're gonna have the edge over your competition because you're gonna have more opens because your email will always land in their inbox, right? So that means it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy, so to speak, right? It rewards itself. So this is how all social media platforms work. This is the system that they introduced maybe two or three years ago. They've perfected it over the years. This is the only way they can track, right? How else can they track? Like you can put like for video, you can fake the thumbnail, right? Which they used to do back in YouTube where you say something like shark attacking a human and then you have a puppy video or something like that. Fake thumbnails or clickbait. You could do that. With email too, you could have a title which is like download my free gift, but in reality you're selling something. So meaning when they open that and then uh, they, they, they check the message and they don't click on that link, then again, it's telling that, that you have some deceptive sub subject lines or whatever. So this is the score that they do. And this is an automated system. It's an algorithm. I mean, they improve it slightly to make it more intelligent and so on. But at the end of the day, this is how it is, right? So use it to your advantage. The same way with platforms like Upwork.com right now that I show you. It's very simple. They're going to check how many people scroll down that page and how many people clicked on your particular job. And if the conversion rate is higher, then they are going to go in and then they're going to feature you higher up, right? Same thing with Fiverr. They're going to feature you higher up. It's all about conversion rate, meaning how many people searched for something, how many people clicked on something, and maybe how many people bought that gig. The more, the more they're going to raise you up. Simple, right? And this is how Amazon works with product rankings. A lot of people don't know this. Amazon has a rating on how many people added your product to a wish list, how many people added your product to cart, how many people, for example, landed on your web, uh, on your page and stuck around a little bit longer in your product page? And then they have all these metrics and based on that, they will give the rankings because they know that even if a product has 10,000 reviews, it might have been an old product while a new product is what everybody's interested in, right? Uh, kitchen utensil or appliance or whatever. That's a more new revolutionary product or whatever. So they know that more people are watching it, put it in a wish list and more people are putting it in an cart or more people who are actually uh, showing interest in it then they're gonna feature that on high, even if it has fewer reviews. It's the only way they can sustain the platforms, right? So hope you're getting some ideas on how the algorithms work of these networks and you can take advantage of uh, this long term, okay? And I'm giving you the insights of this because I've spoke to the YouTube guys, spoke to the biggest email marketers in the world, I spoke to the biggest social media ma marketers in the world. This is how the algorithms work. You gotta take advantage of it. You gotta know the rules of the game to play the game, right? First of all, this is the rules of the game. Rules of the game is all about conversion rate. Rules of the game is all about, okay, this is you start off here and you end here. Now, can you maintain the same level of uh, people? So to answer your question, <laughs> I've been revolving all around, follower size doesn't matter. It's the engagement that you get from the followers that matters, okay? I don't want, for example, a million people in my Facebook group and then only like a small percentage of them engage with me or, or, or even like or have come to my live streams and so on. I'd rather get 1,000 people where all thousand people come and engage with me, right? Because that, that I know will also allow these social media platforms to get me more traffic, more leads, more sales, because ultimately social media platforms also want a following of very targeted amount of people. So my thought process is very simple. I'll get, even if I get thousand people, but who are very loyal people and who will come to my live streams, who watch and who comment and so on and so forth, it's much more valuable than me to me than even a million because a million is only gonna screw up this algorithm right here. We'd have to keep maintaining the same level of, uh, of uh, attention and engagement and conversion rates and so on, okay? So I'm seeing some questions on this, so let me, let me run through, okay? Uh, and, and then, and then uh, we'll go here. Okay, this was a question. We, you see one of the bonuses in uh, Avatar Builder. How does this work? Okay, so this one, uh, actually this was the YouTube ranking uh, one, right? So what this does, uh, for those who don't know, okay, so let me actually jump in and show you this uh, real quick. Where is Avatar Builder here? Um, let me open up the app. So anyway, the bonus is that, that this one was, which was the YouTube ranking thing. It, it gives you hidden keywords, okay? Uh, uh, basically where, uh, let me actually go there right now. Yeah, okay, it's right here. Okay, so this was, I think, the bonus that you were talking about, this one, video rank engine, right? So basically what this does is it finds you the secret hidden keywords of a particular YouTube video that's posted. So it's tags. So for example, if uh, 
you're trying to uh, post a video on how to lose weight. If you say how to lose who lose weight, you're not going to get that many visitors because you're saturated. But it's going to find your keywords that uh, that are hidden that YouTube doesn't show you. Where you click on it, and it's going to give you those keywords like how to lose weight before wedding. Okay, before a wedding, that could be a keyword that has incredible amount of buyer pulse because they're in an urgency, and also it's going to get you more views because it's very very targeted stuff like that. That's what this does. Okay, and. Uh, Yes, this is a good question. So it's good to do 30 second video that helps for con good conversion rate. It depends, but you're in principle, you're correct. Okay. So what I mean by this, the shorter the video is, the easier it is to keep people engaged, right? But at the same time, if you can keep people engaged in a two minute video, for example, you go ahead with it. It's as simple as that. If you cannot keep a user engaged with a 90 second video, then always go for a shorter video. Yes, 100% because the social media platforms algorithms, as I mentioned to you before, they're all very, very much focused upon, uh, you know, uh, conversion rates and so on and so forth. Okay. And yes, absolutely. And uh, yeah. Okay. You're sleeping now. Yeah. We're going to have a replay right up. I'm also going to post the replay, by the way, in this uh, tutorial section here in this watch 21 day training series in the tutorials page. Okay. You're going to find that there as well. Okay. Um, another question is uh, with Facebook posting, would you just upload a video or post a YouTube link? Definitely post a video in the native platform. Obviously, uh, Facebook wants to reward people who use their own platform, right? Same like, for example, you posted a video on, I don't know, Vimeo, and then you shared it on YouTube. No, it doesn't work like that, right? Same thing, obviously. The other question is, uh, uh, if you do not hit the mark, will you go off primary on the next send? Not always. It's a good point, which is the Gmail thing you're talking about. Uh, not always. What they track, I believe, is uh, over a period of 30 days or something like that. It's not like, oh, immediately, because, you know, mistakes happen and so on and so forth. But generally speaking, the stats are very, very clear. And I've tested it across millions and millions of uh, uh, data sets and so on. So I can tell you with, 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 uh, with like proof that, yes, 100%. They're looking at conversion rates, which means open rates. They're putting a score on number of people who open your emails, and they're putting a score on number of people who click on your emails. The more people who click on your emails, it has a higher score than people who open. So meaning you get, let's say, 10% people who open up your emails, but 30, 40% of them click your emails. Your score will be much higher than somebody who gets 30% open rate, but only like 5% click through rate, meaning people who click on your emails. So yeah, definitely uh, that, that works, okay? Now... Uh, this was another question. I use get response. Would you recommend using Gmail addresses? No, 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 no. As I mentioned to you, Gmail addresses would hurt you when you're sending Gmail to Gmail. It used to be a trend back in the day. It's a good question, actually. I tried it. <laughs> it doesn't work. It actually hurts you right now. You got to have some kind of corporate email or something like that. It'll help you out. Another point is autoresponder doesn't matter again. Any decent autoresponder service, which let's say goes to the primary uh, pri uh, promo tab, for example, right now you can convert it into the primary tab of Gmail and any any like hotmail also not go to spam folder and so on and so forth. You can do it simply by increasing your open rates and your click through rate. So this could be done by cleaning up your list, like people who don't open your emails at all last six months, people don't oh, oh, don't click you on any of your emails for the last, uh, I don't know, how, how many ever weeks, right? You can clean up those lists because they're useless. They're just dead weight. You're going to cost less money to send emails that way. And also you're going to get better primary engagement and so on. Same thing with dead weight and subscribers on YouTube or uh, and so on. That's what I'm saying. Somebody has 100,000 subscribers, but only 1,000 people engage. Why do you need the 99,000 subscribers? Just dump them because there's 1,000 people are what you got to focus on. It's useless, right? So that old era of thinking, which is the more subscribers I have, more likes I have, more uh, people who follow me is better, is complete junk, especially now because every, everybody figured out like Facebook and all these other platforms, Instagram, Google, uh, anything you can imagine. have all figured out that the, uh, they can be easily gamed if it's just about likes and shares. Like some celebrity could come in and bring a whole bunch of subscribers uh, to the platform and then now they can benefit from the fact that they're a celebrity, right? That doesn't help the smaller folks, right? With no following. So that's why they change this algorithm a lot. And, uh, and another question is, uh, uh, another question is, uh, yeah, I want to create the videos like the selling video of your software. Can I create them? Yeah, that's the one on uh, the mock-up videos, right? We included them. You see these uh, up to 30 seconds, up to 60 seconds. These are the ones that we, we used 
for our own. You see this website promo, light version website promo. These are the two we we use. We use this one as well, the MacBook uh, one. We use some of these other ones. So yeah, these are right here um, that you can use for sure. And we're adding more of them as well based on customer feedback because I don't want it to be like what we use, but also what other other people's businesses are using to succeed. So we are planning on adding those like very think travel, uh, for example, education ones uh, very soon. So it's going to be up very soon. And of course, as I said, I mentioned a few times, some people are asking the back button. Yes, as well. We're going to be adding coming up very soon. See this, how it works. So you just go next, uh, click next and next, let's say, and then you didn't like something here, right? You can go back, go back and it'll go to the other step. And you can also play around here as well on the top, right? Like, so, so that's one's coming up next week. And also you're going to my videos. Um, this edit clone option also is coming up. It's already in my account, but as I said, we're testing it internally with some folks. Uh, in our team and so on, so just to make sure everything is smooth. There's no edge cases that are having issues and we're gonna release it for you for free for everybody. So that's coming up as well. So yes, to answer that question, that should be good. Should be answering your question. Now, the last question I'm gonna be answering before we close it up, because again, as I said, my goal is to make it as smooth as crisp as possible so everybody can watch the replay, uh, is this part, which is, um, uh, which is a really good question as well that came across. And that was, uh, you know, which is very similar, okay? Which is a very good question. So. Paul, you know, in the application, right, that I have, what's the best way to start? It's very simple. If you want to create a longer video and you want to just have start off with text and create a text uh, from convert a text into a 3D animation video, these are the text effects you would use and get started. If you want to use something which is like a shorter video but will get engagement that is designed to convert sales, right? traffic to sales, run as ads for platforms, um, and so on and so forth. These are the best ones to use, okay? Now, if you have some clients-based videos where they have a bunch of images that they want you to put and you're kind of not sure, like if this 60 second would be a fit for that, right? Then you would use image and frames, right? Which is basically where you can take any amount of images that the client sends you and then put them into your avatar video. So instead of the text showing in the left, it's gonna be images with transitions and so on, okay? That's would be the case. Now, the, this one, I mean, it's not right for this approach, but if you wanted to, um, you know, export the videos to put it into Chatterpal or uh, you wanted to export to another app and then remove the green screen and use these avatars for your heart's desire in another application, um, you can do that with that option. So it all depends on your use case and how you wanna begin, but every one of them are, are very clear, okay? And um, uh, that should uh, help out, okay? Now, Finally, okay, and um, the uh, other questions, I'm seeing a lot of questions coming in. I'll probably answer them after this uh, 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 live stream is done, but hope you found this helpful. Hope uh, I gave you a lot of ideas. I'll post the replay as well later on, uh, so you can see it in that replay section in our tutorials part, which is 21 days. So thanks for everybody coming here. Hope I answered them, and look forward to uh, basically uh, doing more of these for you folks. Hope you enjoy those. Thanks again. Take care, folks. Bye.